try to do that. <laughs> Keglers are next with Rob Stone. <laughs> the keg uh, Keglers. Keglers. To win any event on the PBA Tour is monumental, but there are four tournaments which stand above the rest. They are the majors. The most prestigious prizes in the world of professional bowling. To truly be considered a great in this sport, you must have won at least one. Reigning Player of the Year, Wes Malott, is hoping to do just that today. The Big Nasty has never captured a major, but then again, neither has any of the competitors he will face here at the PBA World Championship, including two former PBA Rookies of the Year, Rhino Page and the real deal, Bill O'Neill. But trying to beat them all is one of the best stories in sports. The former auto worker turned PBA pro Tom Smallwood. Who will capture the first major of his career in this, the first major of the season? The PBA World Championship is next. Today's finalists represent a collection of the next generation of PBA stars. Semi number one, reigning player of the year, Wes Malott, versus former rookie of the year, Rhino Page. While current player of the year points leader, 28-year-old Bill O'Neill, takes on the man who hands down owns the best personal story in the league, Tom Smallwood. And glad you're with us, Rob Stone, joined by the man who won this major back in 1987, Randy Peterson. This the final PBA event of the calendar year, and we have been graced with great storylines and talent. And we begin with the big story from last season, the big nasty, Wes Malott. And Wes Malott making back-to-back -back telecast for the first time this season after somewhat of a slow start. But at six foot five, 250 pounds, and all that power, he is the most imposing player out here. But to defend his Player of the Year crown, it won't be an easy task. In fact, the last time it was done, Rob, 12 years ago by Walter Ray Williams Jr. It was just about this time last year that Tom Smallwood was laid off from his General Motors job when the plant he worked at was closed. Rather than wallowing in self pity, he used that downtime to hone his skills at the bowling center and here he is earning an exemption on the PBA tour. Yeah, it really is a great story. It kind of reminds me of Rudy, the kid that walked onto the Notre Dame uh, football campus, tried to make the team. Nobody gave him a shot. He was undersized, but he had a lot of heart. A lot like Tom Smallwood. In fact, Tom Smallwood made it through tour trials and now is a full-time exempt player on this tour. You know, GM called not too long ago and said, hey, Tom, would you like your job back? Tom said, you know what? I think I'm going to bowl. In fact, you can watch me on Sunday. And here he is, two wins away from a major victory. Take a look at today's bracket. Not a step ladder final. Malak getting by Carter to get to the semifinals. Ronald Page taking care of Jason Couch. Steve Rogers losing to Bill O'Neill in the round of eight. So O'Neill Smallwood in the second semifinal. Time now, though, for semifinal number one. Ladies and gentlemen, a three-time titleist on the Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour and the 2007-8 Rookie of the Year from Wesley Chapel, Florida, please welcome Rhino Page. Here is Rhino Page, grew up not too far from here in Topeka, Kansas, has a huge crowd here with him today. That's how you start a major. Ladies and gentlemen, a six-time PBA Tour champion, the reigning PBA Player of the Year and undisputed king of bowling from Pflugerville, Texas, please welcome Wes Malott. Yeah. 
the big man in black today, dropping a little Johnny Cash on us. Boy, is he fun to watch. He just makes it look so simple. He's the guy you want coming off the bus first to set the tone. We talked about it at the start of the show where all four players on today's telecast are looking for their first major. But when you think of the world championship, it used to be the national championship way back, there was one player that owned this event, and that was Earl Anthony. Let's see what these guys have done going head to head. Shot at a time. It, it, and you know, when you talk about rivalries, it's it's funny because Rhino Page thinks it is, Wes Malott, uh, not so much. Their fifth televised meeting. So Wes working the crowd a little bit as well today. Nothing like a little trip, 4 7 10 for a double to agitate your opponent. You right, sir? The big nasty, too big for the accommodations. Yeah, but look how agile. I mean, he hits the turf and just gets right back up. That's an athlete. Uh, he looked more comfortable down there, frankly. So an opening pair for Wes Malott. And now Rhino Page, who struck in the first, his effort in the second. Good shot, Brilliant. bad break. This is just going to be a little light in the pocket. He's going to rip the rack. Five pin goes over it and takes a sniff at the 10, but it doesn't happen for him. Page bowled collegiately at the University of Kansas. Stays clean with the spare in the second. This is his second televised appearance of the season. He won the Viper Championship during the earlier stages of the World Series of Bowling. Page with his parents and his grandfather in attendance. A lot of fans and former teammates here as well to cheer on the Topeka native. Oh, come on, nine. <sighs> well, Rhino knows it's never an easy Sunday when he's taking on Wes. It's never fun to bowl Wes. He's good, and he always puts up good scores on TV. And, uh, you know, he's, he's one of the toughest opponents out here. But uh, it is a little bit ironic that, you know, we bowled each other so much on TV. And uh, I, I think, hey, if I'm getting the TV shows and bowling Wes, that, that means I'm putting myself in a good spot, uh, you know, in multiple times. So uh, I, I think there might be a little rivalry coming up. It's a little David and Goliath match. Remember those two met at the King of Bowling in the spring? in the Orlando area, Lake Wales. You mean that event that uh, Wes Malott owned? <laughs> and, and he can give Rhino an assist to that as well. Rhino was talking some, talking some smack, and it motivated the big nasty. <laughs> oh, late kick. That one looked like it was a little wide of target, but he gets them all to go. So the early breaks go into Milan. Oh, well, I was just going to say, Rob, let me add up the score. Okay, uh, flush in the first frame for West. Then he trips 4-7-10. Now he trips the two-pin forward for three in a row. Rhino Page, strike in the first, uh, blower 10, and a solid nine. Hmm. Funny game. Still early. Again, neither of these have ever won a major. $50,000 check and a two-season exemption will go to our winner today. <laughs> Hambone! <laughs> you couldn't wait to get that one in. 
Yeah, and that's what champions do, man. They take advantage of good breaks, and West Mott steps up and just cures that last shot. Malott with the lead, but Rhino Page with a slew of Sunflower State connections trying to advance to his second ever, ever major final, the conclusion of Malott Page when we return to Wichita. The PBA World Championship is brought to you by Lumber Liquidators, hardwood flooring for less. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By Bear Aspirin, expect wonders. And by the United States Bowling Congress. The all-new Bowl.com, your online source for all things bowling. Log on to Bowl.com today. We welcome you back live to Wichita, Kansas. North Rock Lanes, the host venue for the 51st annual PBA World Championship, the first of four majors this season on the PBA Tour. And semifinal number one, Wes Malott, with an early advantage over the local boy, Rhino Page. Rhino Page started strong with a strike in the first and then back-to-back -back nine spares. Trying to get back on the strike train here in the fourth. I was like, hey, finally a break. Flushed every shot, and I've got two strikes. This match far from over there. Rhino Page, a lot of heart. The kid knows how to strike, and what a season he had his rookie season on his way to Rookie of the Year honors. Spending the last couple weeks practicing for this tournament, his coach, Ron Hatfield, flew down to Florida to work with him. His swing was getting a little higher than it had in years past, and uh, he and Ron worked with it. Brought it down a little bit, slow things down, and here he is in the semifinals, down 31 as we begin the fifth. Now he's getting that action on the 10 pin. And Rob, I asked him, you know, being the lone lefty on the telecast, is that an advantage? He goes, you bet it is. I said, well, what's your game plan? He says, I'm gonna burn a spot. I said, how do you do that? He goes, lots of sandpaper. Love it. Well, you talked to Bill O'Neill, who you'll see in semifinal number two. He said, hey, you know, the three righties, we got to kind of get together on this one and, and make sure we get our right side of these lanes to our liking to try and help ourselves out. Because otherwise, this is Rhino Pages for the taking. If he gets the look and the little alley he wants, there's no reason he shouldn't win this. So I'm a lot up now in the fifth, looking for five in a row. Whoa. Worried about sticking and rushed. That's nice. Well, right before we went on the air, Wes said, wow, I just stuck for the first time all week. And right here, he hits that out-of-bounds spot, makes it 2 4 8 10. First open frame of this first semifinal for either competitor. And we now take a look at our Lumber Liquidators Know the Wood. It's the PBA World Championship pattern this week, Randy. Yeah, 41 feet in length, but very heavy volume. Oil all the way across the lane, as you just saw. No dry boards to the outside like a typical house shot, making this oil pattern much more challenging. Zero 300s for this event. And the trick the players told me was to keep their target in front of them and roll it. So Malat shifts over now to the left lane after that open frame nine in the fifth. Ooh, and luck has turned on West now, leaving the 10 pin. That ball finishes just a shade late, leaving the soft 10. And I think for Wes and Rhino, it's all about speed control. Because of the lanes being so slick, you get a pinch too firm, and the ball's going to skate right through the break point. Oh, jeez.
Last tournament, that's all right. This is when you call a timeout right now on the basketball court or the football field. He has just lost, lost it between the ears. <laughs> yeah, he's, lo he's lost focus. His attention has gone somewhere other than the task at hand. You don't see that very often from that man right there. Back-to-back -back open frames, leaving the door wide open for this man, Rhino Page. Trying to string together a three-bagger here. <laughs> he cannot take advantage of it. Oh, what a shot that was. Rhino Page took the lead sitting on the bench after back-to-back -back open frames from Wes Malott. <laughs> follows it up with the bucket. He needs to convert here to maintain a two-pin lead. And again, to get this ball to face up, it's all about just speed, and speed is vital. A little too firm, and it just shoots right by the spot. Three, five, six, nine, blown up for the spare. Nice conversion. And we urge you to head on over to PBA.com right now. Leave your question for one of today's finalists or... Yes, for Randy or myself. If selected, your name and question will be read live and answered during today's telecast. Just head on over to PBA.com, click on the inside angle icon, and follow the prompts to leave your question. Again, we will pick one question live today on the big show. Lead at two for the Southpaw. Fourth strike of the match for Page. And he takes a seat, and up comes Wes Malott after having thrown back-to-back -back open frames. You talked to Wes this week, Randy, and you asked him, you know, what are the goals this year? Number one, it's get a major. You know, it's, it's what everybody talks about and discusses as far as where you stand in the world of bowling, past, present, and future. Majors, majors, majors majors and he had a major gaffe in the fifth and the sixth trying to clean it up here in the seventh and he does time to start stringing strikes together if you're the big nasty and, and when you talk to the greats they all talk about winning majors norm duke is uh is very vocal when it comes to talking about his goals and what he looks forward to the most and west Malott is now on that same that same train our Flowmax weekly update focuses on Malat, who finished fourth last week. Lost to eventual champion Jack Jurek in the semifinals of the Shark Championship. So back-to-back -back shows for West to close out the 2009 calendar year. Here he is in the eighth, trying to string a pair together. Ah. Same soft 10 on that left lane, and it's all going to come down to touch for Wes Malott to get that ball to face up the pocket. Watch this. Just a pinch light. Six pin goes to the side. and just kind of DOAs itself right into the right gutter. Needed that one. Still a two-pin match with the spare. He's able to clean up that single pin spare conversion. Again, a, a momentary... Laps of judgment and reason and focus by Malat in the sixth when he left that 10 pin standing. There is Tyler Cassiopo, 10 year old from the New York area. Invited here. A great smile, Tyler. Flash those whites again. Invited here by Rhino Page. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's enjoying his TV time. The young man is. Fighting Crohn's disease, a chronic digestive tract disorder, and Rhino and Tyler got hooked up a couple months ago at a foundation, and Rhino helped raise about $14,000. Rhino, let it go. Well, we let all know what, what kind of a guy Rhino Page is, what kind of character. Uh, remember when his head was shaved for his friend that was going through chemotherapy? I mean, he just, you know, he's just a great kid. Goes through the nose here, only leaving the 4-7, but, you know, there's not a person that I know that doesn't like Rhino Page. He's just a great, great guy, and he's got a heart of gold. Takes care of the 4-7. 
So Paige remains clean here in semifinal number one. All right. The lead only at two, both working off of spares. It's amazing what a major championship will do to the inner psyche of professional bowlers. The amount of pressure in trying to pry a 15 or 16 pound bowling ball off your hand at the moment of truth, the release point. Wes Three months off .com. Wes is right back in this one. A little rusty. You know, this looks like it's just pulled a little bit with a bunch of hand in it right through the nose, leaving the 4-6-10. Just watch Tyler's reaction. He'll tell you how his buddy Rhino did. Who oh, slugged those two down, but his first open frame does not come at a good time in the foundation frame night. Well, this is Wes Malotz now. Best Rhino Page can do if he strikes out is 2-0-1. Wes Malak can strike spare off the sheet for 203. Wes has struggled the last four frames. Go back to the fifth, open frame. Go back to the sixth, he missed that single pin spare conversion. A strike in the seventh, and then another nine frame, nine spare rather, in the eighth. Bottom of the ninth, Malak, the reigning player of the year. Big nasty in his big body blocking out that strike view for us, but he drops all ten. Yeah, and, and for me, this was the the questionable lane for Wes Malott after he went 2 4 8 10 on that lane. Last two shots on the left lane have been both 10 pins. He needs to fill 19 to ensure himself no worse than a tie. Come on, do it. Strike here, it's all over. Leaves the tent. That lane's pretty special right now. I think another word was going to come out of his mouth, actually. All right, a spare here gives him 183 in the ninth. Nine will give him 202. And he will win this match. Remember, he's missed one of these already back in the sixth frame. Does not miss that one in the tent. Nine, he's a winner. Wes Malott's going to bolt for his first major. He makes it to the championship match. But just barely, rarely, do you move on after back-to-back -back open frames in the middle of your match. Why not get the late kick to drop all 10, and it barely brings a smile to his face. Well, he knows he had the match. It, it was his until the ninth frame when he went right through the nose, leaving the 4-6-10. He had Wes Malott on the ropes. He had Malott on the ropes, bleeding uh, with the trainer with the towel nice out. Ball reaction. Not too good today. And you heard Rhino talk about ah, a little bit rusty. Remember. All of our finalists today qualified for the PBA World Championship about three months ago back in Detroit, where the World Series, where the bulk of the World Series of bowling took place. So literally all of our finalists today have had about three months to sit here and stew on what it's going to be like to try and win their first career major. Wes Malott is one win away from that major, 203.
to 191 over Rhino Page. Well, he was featured in USA Today this week, and you can experience him next. His name is Tom Smallwood. His amazing story next as he begins another chapter of his career when our coverage of the PBA World Championship resumes. We welcome you back to Wichita. Wes Malott moves on to the final match of the PBA World Championship with a 203-191 victory over Rhino Page. And this event truly is a world championship with more international players than ever before taking part this year. It's been a big year for the foreign-born bowlers here in the U.S. and it started with the World Women's Championships hosted in Las Vegas this summer. It may sound a little different, but the game remains the same. <laughs> Bowling has always been a worldwide sport, but lately the world has been coming to America. Since the professional bowlers can uh, be part of the team of, and represent their country, uh, a lot more international people are starting to come to these kind of tournaments. I feel good being foreign and representing my country. I feel great. And it's not only the ladies. The PBA Tour is taking on a more diverse look as well, giving international exemptions for the first time. And already 14 foreign-born players have tried their hand on the tour this year, the most ever. All the countries have to build on that, on that image of bowling and build on the importance of growing the sport, not just in America or not just in Malaysia, but globally. And the bowlers say one of the most important ways to get there is through coaching. USBC and BPAA are building a new state-of-the-art training and research center at the International Bowling Campus in Arlington, Texas, with a focus on teaching elite-level bowling to the best the world has to offer. Without coaching, we wouldn't be here. That is something that has to be there. And facilities like this just going to make it better and better. Paving the way for the next generation of bowlers, no matter where they come from. And you don't have to be a world-class bowler to take advantage of a world-class facility. To find out how you can bring your team to the International Training and Research Center, simply log on to bowl.com and click on the ITRC tab. A lot of international flavor at this event, though, Rob, including Jason Belmonte, Oscar Palermo, who you just saw, Stuart Williams from England, and Lennon Monticelli, unfortunately, from Venezuela, had to withdraw due to an injury. But lots of international flavor. No international players advance to this year's PBA World Championship show. In fact, semi number two has a downright all-American feel to it. You have former collegiate all-American Bill O'Neill taking on former auto worker Tom Smallwood. Semi-final number two of the PBA World Championship coming up next. Welcome back to the final event of the World Series of Bowling, the 51st Annual PBA World Championship. You see the banners of the four finalists. Wes Malott has just moved on to the title match with a 203-191 victory over Rhino Page. As North Rock Lanes gets set now for semifinal number two. See Thomas Smallwood on the right side of your screen warming up. He was featured in USA Today this week. A wonderful picture and story about his story from former auto worker to unemployed to PBA pro. He called me on Friday and said, were you interested in coming down for a job? And I said, well, no. And they're like, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm working. I'm a professional bowler. And she kind of, she's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, uh, actually uh, on ESPN Sunday if you want to watch, and the lady next to her uh, was an avid bowler and ended up talking to her a little bit. So, yeah, it was kind of, uh, it was funny. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2009 Chameleon, rather, the his third place finish in the PBA Tour Trials in May earned him a full exemption on this season's Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour from Saginaw, Michigan. Please welcome Tom Smallwood. <laughs> See Smallwood with the uh, the camo-like look up top. He does a lot of bird hunting. 
in November, bought a new house in Saginaw. Things have really changed in his life the last couple months. He's a really challenging you know spare conversion to start off his first ever major. Remember the last time we saw him was on the Scorpion Championship show and he struggled because of a bad back. Feeling physically fine today. I asked him what he needed to do to possibly win his first tournament and his first major victory. He said, you know, I somehow have to figure out a way to control the chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2009 Chameleon Champion and 2005-06 PBA Tour Rookie of the Year from Southampton, Pennsylvania, the real deal, Bill O'Neill. This guy's a show-making monster, isn't he? And now he's got his first win. Look out for Bill O'Neill. Last year, top 10 in every major statistical category, second in points and average, seventh in the Player of the Year points race. He's number one in that race right now. Well, it's not often you see a, a player with this much power and revolutions go this straight, but this world championship oil pattern, very, very slick. Again, the, we've talked about it before, the players wanting to keep their target in front of them, meaning don't get their angles real wide or real open. It gives them the best chance to get the ball into the pocket. This will be his third top five finish already this season. Did not like that one at the release. My man. This just looks a little hard and firm when he gets to the bottom of the swing. And the end result is a pull. Of course, he pays for it, leaving the 410 split. So both. And semifinal number two have left open frames. That's good news for Smallwood. Again, we talked about Earl Anthony's domination in this event. He won a record six times. Norm Duke, Walter Ray Williams Jr., three each for them in this major event. All comes down to the majors. Look at Smallwood's form. I want you to talk to me about it after the shot. Very unique release on the strike there. Well, it, it's a very unusual type of style in that he only puts his thumb into the first knuckle, so theoretically halfway. He kind of guides it back with his left hand, so it's a lot like our two-handed bowlers that we see, a lot like Belmonte, a lot like uh, Oscar Palermo, except he does have his thumb halfway in. Back Jacks after an open frame first for Smallwood. And Tom Smallwood proved himself in Detroit. He proved himself in the World Series of Bowling at Thunder Bowl. He now has to step up and prove that he can do it outside of Michigan. Right of target was O'Neill. He was really? third at the season opening Motor City Open and then won his first ever PBA pretty good. tour title, the Chameleon Championship. And here is Bill O'Neill admitting, yeah, you know what? TV nerves have gotten the best of him in the past. I got to be honest, the last two shows I was on in, in, in Detroit, I was really nervous. Um, I, I really wanted to win really badly and I was putting too much pressure on myself. And I think I needed that. I needed that right. break. I needed, you know those good things to happen to me, you know, to get, just to get that relief. And, uh, you know, as of right now, I'm not, I'm not nervous at all about the show. Um, obviously, when Sunday comes, it could be a little different. But uh, as of right now, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I don't know if it's nerves right now, but he is staring at back-to-back -back open frames in the second and the third. That's one way to loosen up your opponent. He just looks real firm and real fast early on.
and confused. Yep. That's the hardest thing about one game matches on television when you go in with a game plan and all of a sudden it's not working and you've only got 10 frames. Right now, Bill O'Neill is saying to himself, okay, was this the wrong decision? And do I make a change? And if so, which change do I make? Well, remember, we saw Wes Malott almost implode on himself in semi number one in the fifth and sixth frames with open frames there. But then Rhino Page kind of gifted it right back to him. Nothing has been easy for any of our four finalists today. The winner of this one to face Wes Malott in our title match will put the wraps on semi number two and our live coverage returns to Wichita. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson back here with you for the second consecutive season, the North Rock Lanes here in Wichita, Kansas, the host venue for the PBA World Championship. We're three and a half frames through semifinal number two, Bill O'Neill trailing Tom Smallwood by 22 pins, the winner to take on Wes Malott in the title match. And here is Smallwood, opened up with a open frame nine in the first, then kind of calmed things down, figured things out, and struck in the second and the third. He's going turkey hunting now in the fourth. Nice. Camo shirt, turkey hunting, I love it. It all comes together. Boy, and after going light in the first frame, Tom Smallwood has dialed it in speed-wise and getting that ball to face the one three perfectly. His first year as an exempt bowler on the PBA Tour. Native of Saginaw. His wife, Jennifer, here. She tries to win his first ever tour title. high but nice only leaving the four pin leaving himself an easy spare to maintain a 31 pin lead again take a look profile right shoulder down for those of you at home watching your friends tell you when you're bowling league that you're dropping your right shoulder that's a good thing he gets awfully low doesn't he I mean he's five foot six so it's not like he's got far to go to get low <laughs> Wow. That's not a knock. I'm, <laughs> I'm just stating the facts. You know, the thing about it is back in the 70s, 60s and 70s, even in the 80s, when, when the bowling balls weren't this strong and you had to throw the ball straight, okay, that's when you wanted the shoulders to be nice and square or level. Nowadays, with these high-powered bowling balls, you want the ball to go to the right. If you're a right-hander, you've got to get the right shoulder lower than the left. And Neil gets a strike and hopefully gets his confidence back up. He's... He's been busy the last couple months. Bold Team USA in Puerto Rico in September. In October, he spent 16 days in Europe doing clinics, exhibitions, tournaments. Then in November, he kind of said, all right, time to work out, time to focus. Went to the gym a lot, focusing on leg and core training. You're hearing more and more of that from kind of the younger superstars in the PBA. I've been working on my legs, I've been working on my core, not messing with the upper body. You gotta work the quads, Rob. It's all about the quads. Girls for the girls. And the 10 will not drop. Boy, looking to get back into this and cut the lead to 21. Instead, he leaves the soft 10 again. We saw Wes Malott leave that a couple times on that left lane. Just two strikes through six frames for O'Neill. Smallwood with a three-bagger in the second, third, and fourth, working on a spare here in the bottom of the sixth. Hello, trip four. That's a righty's best friend right there. Especially when you're working on a couple of strikes. However, Tom Smallwood may now be able to parlay that into another double. And Bill O'Neill has yet to string a pair of strikes together. 
And that's why you see Smallwood starting to pull away. The lead at 31. He's four frames away from bowling for his first ever, not only title, but first major. Tom Smallwood is bringing it right now, folks. I mean, bringing it. So Smallwood takes a seat. Again, this just his second career TV appearance. You see just over his right shoulder, left side of the screen is Tom's wife, Jennifer. So Neil steps up here, the seventh, and oh, he needed a strike there, couldn't get it. Jesus. Uh, it, it's starting to look, look like this was all stuff. game play. Do it. Idiot. There is Smallwood's wife, Jennifer, very supportive. We decided to make that decision to join the tour and compete. And she said, yeah, give it, give it your best. Try. If it doesn't work out, get a job on Monday, you know, and figure things out. And Tom gave me a great quote this week. He said, she loves and hates me just the same with this success or lack of success or job or no job. Great to have somebody like that supporting you. Here is O'Neill in the eighth. It is getting to desperate time for him. Gets a late break. Rob, I think it was all about his game plan and what he was going to do coming in, and obviously it wasn't the right way to attack this oil pattern. He was going to come in and go real straight and real firm. He sees what Tom Smallwood is doing. He sees that it's a struggle for him to hit the pocket. And it looks like he's tried to kind of get a little bit softer to get the ball to turn the corner. In any event, no doubles yet for Bill O'Neill. And now Smallwood with his second three-bagger of this second semifinal. We remind you, we urge you to head over to PBA.com right now. Just run away from the TV screen for just a moment. And you can leave your question for one of our finalists or for Randy and myself. If selected, your name and question will be read live and answered during today's telecast. All you need to do is head over to PBA.com, click on the inside angle icon, and just follow the prompts to leave your question for us or our finalists. And right now it looks like it's going to be Wes Malott versus Tom Smallwood. folks watching at home here's a great lesson take a look at Tom Smallwood's position at the foul line and how steady and balanced he is look at that and that's every shot he lets go of it his head doesn't move he stays on balance and right now he's got a 51 pin lead over Bill O'Neill he has been clean since that open frame in the first has it on cruise control right now. O'Neill still seeking his first pair of strikes today. He will not get it. We're going to hear more from O'Neill this season. I can guarantee you that. He's just too firm to get his ball to face the pocket. And when he squares up, because of his rev rate, the ball goes high. Tell you what, I've been there, and it's not a fun place to be. You go in with an idea you, or a game plan on how you're going to play the oil pattern. It doesn't work, and guess what? A thousand miles an hour on TV. You get slaughtered. And you just heard him say a thousand miles an hour on TV. The adrenaline goes up, and he starts heaving it, and you can't do it on this oil pattern. Yeah, he would just like to exit stage right. As soon as he can. It's all right. It's not the last time you're going to see Bill O'Neill. He's going to take. Not. He's going to take his nice payday and we'll see him in January sometime. So Smallwood moves on and in a rout. His wife Jennifer will see her hubby. Roll for a $50,000 paycheck. 
Here comes a ball change and a test shot. They put that one in the back pocket and throw it away. Bill O'Neill just threw something in the crowd. I think it was his wallet. As long as it wasn't a bowling ball. Rob, take over for me. I'm going after that wallet because I know there's a lot of cash in there. There's Christmas shopping to be done still in the Peterson household. And that was a test shot. Thomas Smallwood moves on in convincing fashion. 211, 159. So our first major of the season is set. That man, Tom Smallwood versus Wes Malott when the World Series of Bowling rolls on. The PBA World Championship is brought to you by Ebonite, Bowl to Win. By Turbo, Turbo Bowling Accessories, put some extra drive into your game. By Prescription, Flomax. And by Barbasol, enjoy the rush America, new Barbasol Pacific Rush Shaving Cream. Glad you're with us back live here at North Rock Lanes in Wichita, Kansas, as ESPN's coverage of the final event of the inaugural PBA World Series of Bowling rolls on. It all began the Motor City Open, and world's greatest, Walter Ray Williams Jr., took that one. Norm Duke won the Cheetah and the Viper Chameleon Scorpion. And then last week, the Shark Championship won by Jack Jurek. It has been a fun ride leading up to the PBA World Championship. Oh, yes! Is that ridiculous or what? <laughs> That's what I heard. Ryan Simonelli has done one terrific job representing himself. He is in severe pain. My heart bone, my physical game was not there. You got it, Billy! I get one. I told you. Oh, yeah! Yeah! And the crowd is into it because that man is bowling. We have a tie and a roll-off. Eight or less, Jurek has the title. Messenger, no! We have a tie. Does it get any better? Way off target. Jurek can celebrate for the first time in 14 years and 175 days. The Rippers got another title. This month has been unbelievable, and what a way to just cap it off. What a great run it has been. We take a look now at the World Series of Bowling Lumber Leaderboard, and it's Chris Barnes on top through seven events and 103 qualifying games. Wes Malott in second place, and Wes Malott still the bowl. He is up next to take on Tom Smallwood in our championship match. The PBA World Championship, and Randy standing by lane side with our finalists.
Thanks, Rob. Wes Malott now gets a chance to bowl for your first ever major, but what were you thinking in the semifinal match when you went back-to-back -back open frames against Rhino Page? Well, we came back from the break and they, they got a little tighter down lane. So it was, you know, a little transition and obviously I missed a 10 pin uh, on the left lane and just some approach, kind of some approach issues that I'm dealing with personally. Uh, they've been a little slick all week, but for some reason uh, they got them really, really clean this uh, for the shows, which is uh, not necessarily what we normally see. So uh, we're past that. We're moving on and, and now we got a title to win. Thanks, Wes. Good luck. Thanks, Ryan. He gets Tom Smallwood. Tom. You know, you said in your first show that you made a few weeks back that you had to somehow control the chaos of television. How have you been able to do that? Uh, it's still here, but uh, felt a little better this, this week, so uh, I just made a few good shots there. So, and, uh, you know, it's always nice to have a good opponent shoot 150 at you, so you didn't show up too much, and you don't get that wheel, Neil. So, one of the best boys in the world, so. Tom, thanks a lot. Good luck. Rob Stone, there's a major championship on the line. Are you ready? Absolutely, my friend. Remember, this time last year, Tom Smallwood was A, unemployed, and B, not a professional bowler. Now he's one win away from a $50,000 paycheck and a two-year exemption and his first tour title. How we got here and how our finalists can win the season's first major will be discussed when ESPN's live coverage of the PBA World Championship returns. We welcome you back to Wichita, Kansas. Preparations continue for our final match of the PBA World Championship. Wes Malott to take on Tom Smallwood. Time now for our Geico Championship recap. Randall. I've been waiting so long for you to <laughs> say those words. Semifinal number one, Rhino Page against Wes Malott. Rhino Page has got the match in hand until the ninth frame when he goes 4-6-10. Wes Malott gets up and strikes in the ninth to seal the victory. Then it was Tom Smallwood in our second semifinal, knocking down a lot of wood. How about two three-baggers to take down one of the hottest players on tour, Bill O'Neill? So Smallwood will take on a lot in our title match coming up in just a matter of moments. Randy Peterson, Rob Stone back here with you live from Wichita. So we are set for our finals of our first major of the season. How do you see this one shaking down? This is all going to come down to what type of adjustments Wes Malott is making right now as the players practice. And also, can Tom Smallwood somehow keep it together mentally? He looks like he has the best ball reaction of the two players, but it's just... It's hard to describe the amount of pressure that's going to go through Tom Smallwood's body getting up to try to win a tournament, let alone a major. The experience advantage clearly in favor of Wes Malott. We'll see what they do with it. Neither have ever won a major. That is going to change in a matter of minutes. The PBA World Championship title match, uninterrupted, is next. <laughs> Thrilled you're spending part of your Sunday with us. The PBA and ESPN. The final in its entirety of the 51st annual PBA World Championship about to begin. Tom Smallwood taking on last year's player of the year. That man, the big nasty, Wes Malott. Tom Smallwood will start us off. Smallwood, a 2-11, 159 victor over Bill O'Neill. Smallwood had six strikes in that match, a pair of three-baggers. Oh. Height advantage, reach advantage in favor of Wes Malott in this one. 5-6 versus 6-5. frame to begin his first semifinal. A strike here to begin the title match. Yeah, and you can bet one thing for sure. Tom Smallwood doesn't need anything to motivate him. He's about as hungry as a pack of wild dogs. And he is going to bring it all in this title match. What a great story. Again, unemployed General Motors worker. Used his downtime to work on his game. Qualified for the PBA Tour. Made a show back in his hometown. And here he is going for a major versus player of the year. A lot. Whoa to that hang a hard left late for a, a borderline Brooklyn strike. 
That's kind of disturbing when you have that much practice in between matches and your first shot goes Brooklyn. Safe, obviously. Wes was talking to us this week. Hey, it's all about the majors. Winning these titles, winning player of the year, they are great, they are wonderful, but the conversation always turns to major victories, and no one has won more than the great Earl Anthony. Oh Ten titles. Mike Albee, Pete Weber tied for two at eighth, and there's Walter Ray Williams Jr. nestled in there at number four with seven major victories. Norm Duke at number five won this event last year right here at this center. And the great, great, great Don Carter. You've got a big soft spot for him. I do. You? I just love Don Carter, and everybody that's ever met him say the same thing. Yeah, a big nasty figured that one out on the right side of the head pin there for another strike. Well, it was a ball change for Wes Malott on the left lane. Wes has been in this position before. Got that snap out that 10 pin there. You and I talk about adjustments seemingly every week here on the PBA Tour. Rarely do you see one made that early. And he's a big tape guy, too. He's got to have that perfect fit. And he goes through a lot of tape. Smallwood, that one hooked left on him. And he goes through the nose. He leaves himself with a challenging spare pick up here in the second. Well, it looks like the right lane has now fried out because Wes Malott went Brooklyn. Tom Smallwood goes through the nose. There'll be some big adjustments on this right lane the next time these two players are up on that lane. A lot. Great pickup. This kid's got game. He's a nice, nice young man as well. Just very unassuming, but he's got some serious skills, obviously, to make it this far bowling for a major title. A 32-year-old married to Jennifer, who's here in attendance. They have a two-year-old daughter, Hannah. Last season, he earned just over $3,600 on the tour. Here, he can make $50,000. Because of shots like that. You know, it's funny, when we talked to him yesterday, he said, well, you know, there's been a lot of time in between qualifying and, and the TV show tomorrow, and I, I asked him, I said, how's your game? And he says, eh, kind of so-so. <laughs> yeah, less than uh, overconfident, was he? But he's staying focused, he's, he's staying in his own game, something that he failed to do when he made his first TV appearance earlier this season. A lot in the third. Opening turkey for the big nasty, and he is making all kinds of adjustments. Yeah, when you watch Wes Malott, he just he just makes it look so easy. He's got such a great swing and a great release. And at times he just looks bored. I wish there was a way to somehow test the adrenaline going through these players right now at this moment. You, know, you get the sense sometimes Wes needs to be challenged maybe a little bit more. Absolutely. How dare you? It's a major. You know, and there's the adjustment that you're talking about. A different ball on the right lane. And another sphere on that left lane. So that's how he has adjusted to the changing oil pattern here at the PBA World Championship. Now, let's remember, Wes Malott opened up with a four-bagger in his semifinal win, then imploded in the fifth and sixth, was able to survive. Smallwood in the fourth. Come on, yeah, ten! Tom Smallwood goes back to the ball used in the first match on that right lane. He just shreds the rack. Watch the head pin, sidewall, five pin, something other than the head pin comes across. You got something else leaning on the 10. It's shrapnel. Just stuff flying everywhere. I love it. And the avid bird hunter finds himself a turkey. His wife, Jennifer, 
Oh, exhale, inhale. She's got some nerves on her. She has a great view of this title match. Wes Malott up now in the fifth on the right lane. He has been perfect through four. That looks good. That's that same soft 10 that he left in the first match against Rhino Page. Oh boy, that looks real good. Just a little push down the lane to get hey. that ball to finish just a little light. And again, we talked about how much tape he likes to go through. We've been telling you throughout the broadcast to go to PBA.com and send us your question. We have that PBA inside angle fan question from Johnny Gorchins from Porter, Indiana. Randy, how do you feel about throwing a plastic ball at the bucket? Rob. And Johnny. Johnny, I love it. I love it. That cluster of pins, the, it's the 2 4 the two, four, five, eight for right-handers, and the three, five, six, nine for lefties. I love throwing plastic spare balls at just about any spare because it doesn't matter what the lane conditions are like. You just got to throw it on a straight line. The only spare that I wouldn't throw a plastic ball at would be the three, six, nine, ten for a righty because you got to cover that nine pin, the back pin, with hook. Plastic balls, as we know, don't curve. Johnny, we thank you for that question. And Excellent Ry answer. And Rhino th threw a plastic ball and made it perfectly. Yep. So Malat, off a spare in the fifth, we begin the sixth. Yeah. Leaves the four pin. It's not one thing, it's another. And we saw the problems in his semifinal match in the fifth and the sixth frame. These are clearly not as troublesome and worrisome as those two open frames were in the semis. Instead, he's staring at a pair of nine spares. He's having a little bit of trouble with the approach. And that's not a good thing right here when you're trying to win your first major. Here's the deal. Tom Smallwood can step up here in the sixth frame, throw a strike, and take the lead. Just an unbelievable great story. This is his first season as an exempt player. He earned his exemption by finishing third in the 09 PBA Tour Trials held at Thunder Bowl in Allen Park, Michigan. Here he is looking for a four-bagger. And the lead goes to Smallwood. Smallwood throwing big, big shots. Check this out. He knows what the score is. Hey, I can take the lead for the first time in this match. Bang. We talked to Wes Malott earlier this week, and he said, you know, I, I did some bowling with regional tournaments leading up to this one to get myself ready. I may have bowled a little too much. My thumb feels like meatloaf right now, and he's having some issues with it. A small one steps up in the seventh and goes through the nose. You know better. You know, he's, you know better now. Wes has got the code red going on the thumb. It is bleeding. This is no time to let something like that stand in the way of a major. Let me tell you something. Bowlers bowl with bloody thumbs all the time. But talk about bad timing. Tom Smallwood couldn't have left the split at any worse moment. Oh, working on a four-bagger, just took the lead. He just gave it right back to Wes Malott with a huge open in the seventh frame. And an open wound on his right thumb. Chalking it up, a pair of nine spares in his last two frames. Yeah, let's get, let's get a lot of rosin on that thumb, too, to go with a little blood. Love it. That's why he's the big nasty. Bad, bad mammal. And you know, sometimes that's just the motivation you need when you're seeking something, when you need that edge. Malat drops all 10 in the seventh. Lead back in his corner. He's got a major championship in his sights. He's done just about everything else. Remember the king of bowling bowled not one, but two perfect games. 
The only thing missing on the resume now, a major title, eyeing up the world championship, West Milan, left lane. And I'll tell you what, he's... Wesley, 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 Wesley. He's happy he only left the two pin on that shot. That could have been two, four, eight, ten, easy. Max scores, Tom Smallwood, 245. If Wes Malott spares here, Wes can still shoot 248. And interesting, Rob, that he chose not to throw a spare ball at the two pin. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I'm thinking it's a thumb issue. With his thumb bleeding like that, maybe he didn't want to hang up in his spare ball. So here's Smallwood, bottom of the eighth, trailing 13, working off an open frame in the seventh. His only open frame of this title match. Sixth strike of the title match Both for Smallwood. Excuse me. Both players got the fingers wrapped up with the finger tape to protect the fingers. Unfortunately, Wes Mallott, no tape on the back of his thumb. There's the yellow tape on Wes's fingers, black tape on Tom Smallwood's fingers. A lot of games, a lot of pain, a lot of pressure on those fingers. You got to protect them. Now, Tom Smallwood knows that if he strikes here in the ninth frame, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Wes Mallott. It's a great shot, but no matter what he does in the 10th frame, he can't shut out Wes Mallott. Remember, the best he can shoot, 245. Wes Mallott can still shoot 248. But talk about a pressure shot and coming through in the clutch. So a pair of strikes there for Smallwood in the 8th and the ninth. We give way to Mallott here. Foundation frame ninth, working on a spare. Whoa, and gets another Brooklyn. But he stares it down, and that's that's not an intimidating stare. That's a, I got to figure that one out stare. Just unbelievable. Two Brooklyns, as his wife looks on, two Brooklyns in the title match of a major. Wes Mallott looked at that last shot, and he was beside himself. He saw so Meredith, his wife, doing the hook'em horns. Yeah, there's one of his sons in attendance, Jordan there, showing their Texas Longhorn pride. Big, big shot coming up here, and he knows it. Remember the last time on this lane, he went light. We begin the 10th of the first fault major of the year. <laughs> Through the nose, and gets a pretty good break, leaving just the 10. Tom Smallwood can step up in the 10th frame and throw the first strike uh, and win this tournament. Give Wes Malott the spare. He'll be in the high 220s. Here comes the spare ball. See if there's any issue there with that thumb. All right. Covers the 10. Strike here puts him at 228. Tom Smallwood at 225 right now. Wes Mallott needs to get at least eight on this ball to, fo to force Tom Smallwood to strike on the first ball. <laughs> big strike from the big nasty. Boy, he never got a chance. Sit and wait now. Never got a chance to take advantage of that huge Brooklyn in the ninth frame. Now it's all Smallwood. Strike on the first ball. Good count. He wins his first title. And he will become the 34th player to win a major as a first title. The last to do it last season, John Nolan at the USBC Masters. Strike and then seven pins for the title.
He just did the dirty work. Now seven for a celebration. Oh, she knows the numbers. One of the greatest stories in sports right now. Former unemployed General Motors worker turned PBA pro in less than a year, and here he is seeking his first true title, and it'll be a major. Needs seven pins for the win. Dreams do come true. One of the gutsiest performances I've seen in a long, long time. Crowd on their feet in Wichita. Goosebumps, people. Celebrate, Tom. Celebrate. Denny and Sharon in attendance. A great timing on their part. He's handling this well. He's handling it better than I am. The PBA World Championship goes to Tom Small with his first ever victory on the PBA Tour. And it just happens to be a major. Smallwood wins it, and we'll hear from him when our live coverage from Wichita in the PBA World Championship returns. The PBA World Championship is brought to you by Lumber Liquidators, hardwood flooring for less. By GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By Barbazol, enjoy the rush, America. New Barbazol Pacific Rush Shaving Cream. And by Prescription Flomax. Tom Smallwood, not only winning his first tournament, but his first major, he is now on top of the PBA Player of the Year. Point standings, Smallwood 244. 228 over West Malott. Let's hear from our champion, Randy, standing by with him right now. Thanks, Rob. Man, oh man, Tom Smallwood, your life has really changed the last couple of months. Describe what this win means to you and your family. I'm um, just still, still enjoying the ride. I mean, this is unbelievable just to get here, win a first match against Bill and one of the best in the world, then bowl, bowl of the year last year, West Malott. Um, to me, a chance to give you guys against TV. It's unbelievable to win. Just bonus. I'm enjoying it. Just enjoying every second of it. And when you get up in the 10th frame knowing what you needed to win, what went through your mind? Uh, actually, fortunately, that was a good lane. Uh, Wes created a bunch of hook right of me, so I moved one more left, and I knew it was going to hook, let alone if it's going to carry or not. You didn't know, but yeah, I felt pretty comfortable on that lane. Other lane, I probably would not have felt near as comfortable, but he uh, created a bunch of hook to the right, so I moved one left, and it happened. You get the trophy. Do you give your wife the check? Most likely. Uh, that's how it usually works in my house, so it's all right with it. Good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Tom Smallwood, a major championship winner, the 34th player to win a major for his first title. And a lot of reason to celebrate in the Smallwood house this holiday season. Hard to find a better feel-good story in any sport right now, and clearly it is the one dominating bowling. Tom Smallwood in his second ever television appearance wins his first tour title, and it just happens to be the first major of the season. What a way to close out the calendar year. Our next PBA event, it's an encore presentation of the season opening Motor City opening. Open, rather, the final. What a star-studded field this one was. Hall of Famers Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Pete Weber 
former player of the year, Chris Barnes and Tommy Jones, and former rookie of the year, Bill O'Neill, in that one, January 3rd, 1 p.m. Eastern. And the next Sunday will be the Pepsi Red, White, and Blue Open. Tom Smallwood. What a way to close out 2009. A 244, 228 victor over Wes Malott to capture his first ever tour title. Smallwood, now the 34th pro to win a major as his first PBA title. What a story. For Randy Peterson and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. Have a safe and enjoyable holiday season. This has been a presentation of ESPN, worldwide leader in sports.